Norris served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, and he was a senior airman in the United States Air Force. All right, Mr. Norris, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Where were you living at the time? I was living in Groton, Connecticut. Why did you join? I joined for the benefits. Uh, for couldn't, couldn't afford college, so I heard all the good benefits, like the GI Bill and free tuition assistance uh, state of Connecticut offers. So. Uh, why did you pick the service branch you joined? Picked the Air Force just because they have a little bit better quality of life. They treat their uh, members a little bit better. Fair housing and just, uh, you know, just seem more appealing than the other branches. Uh, do you recall your first days in the service? Uh, yeah, that was uh, boot camp. Or, basic military training. Uh, that was in Lackland Air Force Base. First day, we just got off the bus, and you know all the uh, instructors are screaming at us to get in line and just uh, just harassing us, putting us under a lot of stress just to see how we react. What did uh, it feel like? Very stressful and confusing, but uh, just trying not to make myself stick out and do what everybody else is doing. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your uh, boot camp and training experiences. Uh, well, they pretty much teach you the basics uh, on how to be an airman. Uh, they really emphasize attention to detail and uh, they stress, that's why they stress like certain ways of doing things. It has to be done exactly uh, how they tell you to do it. Uh, it wasn't as much physical training as it was mentally stressful. Yeah, you were on the rifle range, navigation courses, all we, that kind of we stuff? Did, uh, we did shooting. We qualified once, that was like a one day thing. We had a warrior week, which was like a whole week where we were out in the field, and we just did different drills. Like we went to the gas chamber, just to get familiar with uh, like tear gas. Tear gas yeah. And uh, some other like combat medic stuff, like just Basic, basic first aid and basic first aid stuff like that. And uh, do you remember any of your instructors from boot camp? I don't remember their names, but uh, characters though. Yeah, like some some were good and some were just like you could tell they were really too into it, like trying to be. I don't know. Uh, how'd you get through it? Uh, it was only seven weeks, so it wasn't too hard, just stay busy, always stay busy. So uh, time flew by pretty quick. Were you able to write to anyone or? We could write letters if we had time at the end of the day. A lot of time we didn't have much time. Yeah. Uh, we were allowed phone calls every now and then if we had been good at drill or doing uh, marching or whatnot, but it uh, didn't happen too often. All right, so that concludes segment two. Segment three, experiences. Uh, Mr. Norris, which wars did you serve in? Served in uh, Enduring Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan uh, back in 03 or 04. I did Operation Iraqi Freedom uh, twice in 05 and 06. Okay, so when it asks exactly where you went, Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay. Uh, do you remember arriving and what it was like? Uh, my first point was Afghanistan. It was uh, it was a little different just because I didn't know what was going. On. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if we were like getting shot at right away or anything, but uh, just kind of confused. A lot of learning uh, to do how things are run on base and stuff. How was the heat? Uh, I went there like in the fall, so it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Uh, what was your job slash assignment? Uh, I was a Air Force Joint Terminal Attack Controller, so I called in uh, airstrikes. Uh, rolled out with the Army, called in airstrikes on enemy targets. Did you see combat? Uh, yes. Uh, were there many casualties in your unit? Not too many casualties. Uh, tell me about a couple of your most exper uh, memorable experiences. First deployment, we went out on a uh, 
my, my first time ever seeing like combat would probably be when we went on a QRF quick reaction team to a troops in contact situation and a uh, uh, US convoy had been hit and the car was burning and there was uh, American troops died and that was my first experience and then uh, let's try to think of another one uh, another one in Afghanistan our truck got hit by an ID and pretty much blew out the back end of our truck uh, but nobody was hurt in that one, so. Uh, were you a prisoner of war? No. Were you awarded any medals or citations? Uh, for my first deployment, I got the Air Force Combination with Valor. Uh, how, how did you get that? Uh, it was from when our truck was blown up. Uh, we had called in an airstrike. Uh, on some guys who were shooting ass. Got it for doing that. All right, that concludes segment three. Segment four. Uh, how did you stay in touch with your family, Norris? While I was deployed? While you were deployed, yeah. Um, well, there's two people in uh, a JTAC team, myself and a Romad, uh, and we get to shoot a satellite phone. So uh, we'll either use that or we'll use the Army's line of communication. My first deployment, we had a phone, but we didn't have any kind of electricity or anything like that. So uh, we got to get kind of creative and uh, charge the phone somehow, but there was no internet or anything, and uh, we had limited time on it. So I made phone calls probably about once a week, once every two weeks. Were there any communications blackouts or anything? Yeah, whenever uh, something went wrong, like somebody was killed or something, uh, they black out all communication so you couldn't call home. That's just so the family can be notified before anybody else tells them. You know, the government wants to tell family before they find out from someone else. Uh, what was the food like? Uh, the My last two deployments, it was uh, awesome, pretty phenomenal. You guys had private contractors come in yep, there. Yeah, KBR comes in and they, uh, they have a whole kitchen set up and Pretty, uh, it's actually pretty good. Eat pretty good over there. First deployment, though. First deployment, we didn't have any electricity or anything, so it was all MREs. And um, whenever we get a chance, we buy from the local, local people, and they come in and they cook rice and goat and bread and stuff like that. So it was a little bit different. Locals, uh, how how they react to you guys? Uh, some good, some bad, a little in between. Well, they always want stuff from us. They're always asking us for. Well, this is Afghanistan. They're always asking us to build. To, uh, to build them a well for water or something. Um, but I think the most part they liked us. The, uh, they liked us a lot more than you know, Al-Qaeda or whatever. So, uh, Did you guys have uh, plenty of supplies over there? Supplies were good. We, we were kind of in a remote area, so we get mail and you know resupplies for food, water, and stuff probably about once a week. Would they fly in like a C-130 or they would they fly on Chinook. It? And uh, they'd land real quick, we'd run in and get the stuff and then leave. Uh, did you feel pressure or stress over there? Uh, yeah, there was a lot of stress. It was very fast paced. Uh, I'd go on missions once, twice a day for a good four to eight hours each. Um, so you guys didn't get a lot of sleep when you were on missions? Uh, no, we don't sleep on missions. But uh, when, I mean, when we get back. You, know, you want to crash out, but you can't crash out because it's too hot during the day. So, I mean, the only time you can really sleep is at night, unless you got a mission at night. Because you know, there was no air conditioner or anything, so... Uh, but was there anything special you did for good luck when you went out on a mission, or just in general? Uh, just wear all my protective gear. That's it. And that's uh, body armor? Or, you wear the yeah. shoulder pads or anything? The body armor and um, helmet. Uh, I've heard some people had like Vietnam era flak jackets where you guys did you no, have we, newer everyone, ceramics. Everyone stuff? had uh, level three uh, body armor plates. So you guys felt relatively safe wearing those. Yeah, it was pretty safe. Uh, how did people entertain themselves over there? Uh, a lot of the guys have guitars uh, to play cards. Um, 
they bring in any entertainers or anything? Entertainers? We, we didn't have anybody come visit because we, it was a base, about 200 people. So it was a pretty small base. But uh, some of the, the bigger bases in the country had. Yeah. Like Toby Keith came and uh, met Geraldo. Uh, met a few people. Uh, were you ever allowed to go on leave? And if so, what did, what did you do? Yeah, my, uh, my first deployment, I got to go on R&R &R for two weeks. Uh, actually, it was like three days. And it was, it was to uh, Qatar, a place in the Middle East, really rich country. It's right on the coast, right? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's almost, yeah, it's right, right on the coast. Right next to like U UAE like or... Um, it's, yeah, it's somewhere near Kuwait, but uh, that, was, uh, that was pretty nice. They have the chilies there and the pool and everything. And you can go downtown and buy some local jewelry or whatever and just go shopping. It's very westernized. Okay, uh, so just kind of going along with that, wh where all did you travel uh, throughout your service? Uh, I went to Germany. Uh, Gone through Ireland, Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, um, Qatar, uh, I Can't remember. I'm not sure that's the right name. Um, I lived in Alaska, Georgia, been to Washington, pretty much um, everywhere in the states for training. And this was throughout your, your four years in service? Uh, six years, yeah. Six years. Uh, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? Mm, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> uh, you guys make any like uh, webcams over there? Or I've seen like music videos online. Uh, yeah, we, I mean we make videos and stuff like some people be doing funny stuff. Somebody will fall asleep and we'll do something to them or so it's basically just like college, in a yeah, sense. Yeah, it's like this. I mean, yeah, you find stuff humorous. But it's uh, uh, I don't remember. Well, I don't remember like one particular time. Like, right. Uh, well, th this is kind of going along with that. What, what were some of the pranks you guys would pull? Um. I don't, yeah, I, I don't even know. <laughs> too much. Too many. Too much time for pranks in Afghanistan. Iraq, we'd have a lot of extra time, so we'd do stuff, but I don't remember anything in particular. Uh, do you have any photographs from either Iraq or Afghanistan? Yep, we have a bunch of them. Uh, who are the people in some of the photographs? Just guys in your unit? Uh, yeah, some of the guys I work with, some army guys. Yeah. Um, so you didn't get any pictures of, like, Geraldo or anything like that? I have a picture of uh, oh, Geraldo nice. and I. Uh, what's our picture of? Nobody too famous. I think I want to Toby Keith too. Uh, what did you think of uh, your officers and fellow soldiers? Um, they were good. I mean, we all worked together, so I mean, we did what we had to do. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was stressful, so people would get agitated. Yeah, some people get frustrated, like the way yeah. you're doing something. But oh, and for the most part, um, it was just a two-man team, so. I mean, I got along great with my my sergeant or now is he a navigator along. or a, a spotter? What what would what was his? We his we job? both uh, shared up duties for plotting, um, just double checking each other, make sure we have the right coordinates for stuff, um, spotting, uh, marking, you know, different things. One guy usually talks on the radio to the pilot. Uh, there's a specific order you have to do things for it to be legal and like make sure you don't make mistakes so we just double check that that order would you guys have to call in to command or hq or whatever yep, exactly you call like it? i'll usually talk to the army or we'll, we'll switch verses but finding out where all our guys are so they don't get mixed in no friendly yeah so there's no uh fratricide uh what would you guys bring out on a typical patrol with you well on a typical patrol um we have our whole pallet system that's four different radios in it HF radio, FM radio, the uh, HF radio is a long distance radio and the FM is talk to the army. So we bring out a lot of that stuff and we bring MVGs out for night vision. We bring uh, our weapon, M4, 9mm, body armor helmet, um, a little 
little smart book just to make sure we have everything uh, in order we need to do stuff and some food, water, and gas. All right, that concludes segment four. Segment five, after service. Uh, Norris, do you recall the day your service ended? Uh, yeah, my actual terminal, I went on terminal leave around July uh, 22nd. Uh, where and were my you? my actual end of service is August 22nd. Of this year? Or 2009? Uh, 2008. 2008. Uh, where were you when you found out you were going on terminal leave? Terminal leave? Um, I was at work. I got my orders cut to me and pretty much left three days later. You excited? Apprehensive? I was very excited. Very excited. Uh, what did you do in the days and weeks afterward? Partied? After I got my orders? Yeah, after your, uh, you got your terminal. I just packed and uh, packed all my stuff and got my U-Haul and everything and just closed up shop and started driving home. Did you uh, meet up with friends and family and all that? they have a party for you or anything? Uh, I, can't, I, I was in Georgia when I got my terminal leave, so stopped off in South Carolina on my way home because my mom lives there. And I just headed up here, met with uh, my roommates. And uh, this question is, did you go back to school? Uh, we know you're at CCSU now. Did you go anywhere before this, or was this your first stop after you got out? Nope, this is my first stop. Uh, is your education supported by the GI Bill? Uh, my tuition is paid for by the state of Connecticut, uh, the Veterans Tuition Waiver, and I also get extra support from the GI Bill, so I get about fourteen fifty a month from the government. Uh, did you make any close friendships while, uh, while in the service? Yeah, I've had a lot of good friends I still talk to. Uh, a lot of them are out now, but we still keep in touch. Okay, yeah, the next question was, did you continue any of these relationships? So. Uh, for how long? Uh, like right up until today, you haven't really lost contact with anybody or anything? Uh, all, all the close friends I still talk to. Uh, I went to a couple of my buddies' weddings. But... Uh, are you, uh, are you in a veterans organization now? Uh, I've got a couple of meetings on campus, some of the, uh, CCSU student veterans. But uh, I haven't done anything actual. I haven't registered with the, uh, VA. Yeah, he's still got a wild yeah, thing. So. All right, that concludes segment five. All right, Norris, uh, what did you go on to do as a career after the war? Uh, just get my education first, and then after that, get a career. This is your bachelor's degree you're going for? Uh, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Um... Yeah, I mean, now, now I know like what it's like being over there and stuff. I mean, it's a little bit more insight than what someone who hasn't been over there. So, were there any things you were disappointed about or felt especially strong about? Um, not really. Not really. All in all, it was pretty. It was a, it was a good experience. Yeah. And, I mean, we're doing a lot to help those people over there. So. Absolutely. Uh, how did your service and experiences over in Iraq and Afghanistan affect your life? Uh, definitely matured me, and just uh, you know, just told me, just taught me not to take stuff for granted, and uh, I don't know. Uh, is there anything you would like to add that we haven't covered in the interview? All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Norris. That was uh, that was excellent, and I do appreciate your time. No problem. And that concludes segment six and the interview.